Today is gonna be a fun day. I'm getting ready to head, head to the airport, and as you guys know, I'm working on my instrument rating. It's going slower than I wanted it to just because of availability, my schedule, my wife's schedule, kids' schedule. I need to work on making it a priority right now that's on me, but I'm working on it. So I met this guy actually at my home airport. Uh, like I said, he's a CFII, seemed like a cool dude, so talked to him for 15 minutes, and today we're going flying. So we'll see how it goes, and yeah, catch you guys at the airport. Peace. Don't say anything you don't want on the internet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Avionics are good. We'll get our weather. Berkeley County Airport. Automated weather observation. One, six, five, niner. Zulu weather. Wind. Calm. Visibility. One, zero. Clear. Below. One, two. Thousand. Temperature. One, three. Celsius. Dew point. Minus three. Altimeter. Three. Zero. One, five. Gyro instruments are working. Fuel selector valve is on my left tank. Confirmed. Uh, prop control is where I want it. That's for a run up. We'll get out there and we'll do that. 1 1 Mexican Berkeley County winds are calm. Thanks, Bo. 3015. Not reporting. Thank you, Bo. Yeah, Moody's have got a lot of interesting stuff on them. You know, they just got like power boost and all that stuff. Yeah, the yeah. power boost is cool. What is that? Do um, you know what it is? No, I just know it's a system. Uh, so, it's like not. It's not a turbo normalization, but it's kind of like, you know, boost it, your manifold pressure a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah. it's ram air. It just basically opens up a hole in the front of the airplane. And when you're at a high speed, there's pressure there. So it just bypasses your air filter and goes straight into your engine. So you can only use it when you're up high. Right. And you're not in any kind of okay. um, dust or anything or visible moisture. And if you have it open while you're low or while your gear is down, it gives you a little light to remind you. But, I mean, you should be remembering to do that anyways. Right. Um yeah, it's cool. It gives you a whole line, extra inch. Really? Huh. Yeah. We have a Mooney preparing to depart T3. 1700 suction looks good. Engine instruments are good. Fuel pressure, manifold pressure, are holding. Go to left. Good drop, two right. Good recovery, one left. Good drop, one right. Good recovery. Get some warm oil on that prop. Watch your manifold pressure first. One. RPM next. Two, oil pressure third. There's three. Good. I talk to myself when I'm alone, by the way. You should. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> some people think I'm should. talking to them. I kind of am, but... All right, flight controls. Three and... Correct. Trim. Set for takeoff. Fuel selector handles where I want it for now. Got them. Everything got 14 gallons on that tank. Um, flaps are good. There's some cool ponds out here um, that way. Um, they're for Cane Bay. They're private property. And I know that because I, I strapped a fishing pole to my paramotor and flew out there and landed and went fishing. And that ought to do it. Right, let's bring it in. Oh, there he is. There he is. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> Fly fishing. Oh shoot, there's someone looking at my paramotor. You're trespassing. Okay. Yeah, not allowed to come back here, but I'm gonna take off. And it's uh, beautiful, so I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of the weather. Berkeley County traffic, Mooney 2711 Whiskey, taking off runway two trees, straight out. Berkeley County. Here we go. Alrighty. Pressures are good, RPM's good, and instruments in the green, airspeed's already alive, they're 65. Light up the controls. There you go. Tap the brakes. Pause the brake. Gears coming up. Up and locked. Flaps coming up. All right, there's 500. Power comes back to 25. RPM comes back to 25. And then you lean to maintain 13.5 gallons per hour. Okay. Cool. Berkeley traffic, Mooney 27011 Whiskey, departing up the upwind runway 23, headed out to the southwest. Last call, Berkeley County. Uh, Charleston approach, good afternoon, Mooney 27011 Whiskey, VFR request. Whiskey, Charleston, 
Charles Approach, 2711 Whiskey. Um, we are about five miles south southwest of Munch Corner, looking to pick up VFR flight following to Sierra India India, or excuse me, Sierra Sierra India at 4,500 feet. We're tight, Mooney M20P. Mooney 11 Whiskey, Squawk 4255, altitude zero discretion. 4255 and altitude PD 11 Whiskey. 4255 in the box. Right on, thank you. We want to see your radar contact. 10 miles southwest of Monk Corner, altimeter 3014, stay off to leave. Alright, 3014, position checked and climbing through 4000 for 4500. Booney 2711 with you. 2711 with you, thank you, sir. And uh, you can maintain VFR on course. Yeah, VFR on course, one on with you, thanks. What's, uh, yeah, what's, what's the fuel differential you look for normally before you switch? Um, in the tanks? Yeah. I'll show you here. Um, so, you can you can burn one dry. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't You're matter. Not gonna, it's not going to throw you off. But I'll burn, if, yeah, with full tanks, I'll burn 10 out of one tank, and then 20 out of the other. Okay. And then come back here for 10. contact approach on 120.7. 120.7, one on Whiskey, tip. Approach, good afternoon, Mooney 2711 Whiskey, 4,500. Number 2711 Whiskey, Charles Approach, crossing on 10 minutes, 3014. 3014, one on Whiskey. A little like 21, about there. And then back to 24 inches, or excuse me, 2400 RPM. If you can add these numbers up, 24 and 21, and it's less than 44. But at 20 it will be. Yeah, there you go. You got 24 or less? Yeah. Okay. Now I can run it at peak. Okay, so my fuel strategy. So what I do, so like today, we're burning off the left. I'm going to burn that down to four gallons. So I'll burn 10 off of it. Keep an eye on that until it gets to 10. Now I'll, I write 10, 10. 10 being 10 off that tank, 10 total. Then I'll burn 20 off of this, which we'll never get there today. Then it would be 20, 30. My total's always at the bottom, and I keep going like that. But I always like to leave a little bit in the other tank, because if I go to switch and something's wrong, I want some fuel left yeah, in that tank. absolutely. Okay, so, like, what would, like, what would, like, give me some IFR, like, stuff. What, what can I expect? Okay, so, like, like if uh, like if we were flying IFR right now, or well, just like, kind of just... Well, like, my training, like, because okay. I, haven't, I haven't started with my CFI yet. Gotcha. My CFII, rather, so... So... Part 61, the main thing that you need, obviously you need to be a private pilot, right? And you need 50 hours cross-country, which cross-country PIC, which I'm sure you have. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so yeah. that's kind of the main limiting factor for a lot of guys. They come straight out of private, they have to go get 50 hours cross-country PIC if you're okay. part 61. So you got that. So really all you'll have to do is you'll have to do your certain specific requirements. One whiskey, contact, be for approach, 125.12. 125.12, one on whiskey, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Buford Approach, good afternoon, Mooney 2711 Whiskey, 4,500. Mooney 2711 Whiskey, Buford Approach, December 3013. 3013, one on Whiskey. Really, the only thing you'll have to do is you'll just have to do the 40 hours of instrument. Yep. Either actual or simulated. Um, and then 15 of, it, 15 of it has to be with me, or, or a double I, right? So 15 really? of it has to be a double I. You only yeah. need 15 hours with a CF double I? Yep, technically. So, wow. you know, that 40 hours of actual or Sam or Hood time, you know, could have been you know, city pile, whatever. So, like, if you wanted to go to the hood right now, you totally could. Um, you could log a little bit of sim instrument time. And then you'll just have that specific cross-country, so it's a actual, it's like a 250 nautical mile actual IFR cross-country. Three different airports approaches each one. It has to be actual IFR, like IFR conditions, or can you do it under the hood? Under the hood is fine. It's, oh, okay. just, a, it's just an IFR plan, yeah. Okay. And then as long as you've got, like, the, the normal three hours of training in the last 60 days, you're good. Do, when you do a check ride, are they, like, going to make make me do obscure, like, NDB approach? Well, I can't do an NDB in here, but, I mean, like, is it up to them, or, like, what's 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 common with that? It's technically up to them. They have to do, not they have to do, you know, different kinds. So, mine, I did ILS, RNAV, and a VOR. Okay. So, that's what I would probably expect for you. Okay. Um, I've never heard of a guy get an NDB approach now, like, these days, really. Especially, like, your plane is equipped for it, so you can't do it anyway. And does so. your does your aircraft have to be IFR certified? No, it, not to do hood time, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Or to do your it doesn't have to do it doesn't have to be IFR certified to do your check ride as long as you're in VFC, as long as you're in VFC, you know, okay. fly VFR. Okay. Yeah. If you ever get a chance to do cross country, St. Simons is pretty cool. It's literally like an you know, an island with an airport on it. Freaking awesome. Nice. Vacation destination too. And then 
just south of it is Jekyll Island. Oh, which okay. They use the same frequency because the airports are so close, like you can see here. Yeah. And this airport is awesome. It's literally an island runway, like water right on the side of it. And when you land there, they give you, if you like, want to, they give you a free buggy. They got a whole fleet of these red electric buggies. You can get in Whoa. and go drive around the island and fuck around. Really? Yeah, dude. It is really cool. I'm about to take the girlfriend there. Oh, that's, dude. That's cool. It is cool. And they got, I mean, they have hotels on there. So if you want to do like an overnight, you can, yeah, you you can easily do that. Do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Killer. And they're really cool there. And so, I mean, same thing with St. Simons. They don't have the buggies. And it's a bigger airport. They got jets and shit in there. Right. Um, but I took the wife to St. Simons for vacation one time. Nice. And it was really fun. Yeah, I'll have to put that one on my list for yeah, sure. Definitely, definitely. I've, I've heard of Jekyll Island, not the airport, but you know, people go to Jekyll Island. Oh, yeah. The airport is so cool. In fact, we could, we don't need fuel. We can land there because their fuel is kind of expensive. Yeah, 665. Sure, man. Yeah, do whatever you want. Do a touch and go there and then go to SSI. Yeah, IFR is a, IFR is a big rating. Once you do, you're like, oh, thank God. You know. I can't wait, man. Um, and I, I It's got, rewarding. I got a chance to do quite a bit of it so far, like flying back from Seattle. Let me know when you I get flew with my buddy who was IFR rated. It's the only way I could really do it feasibly. Yeah. And we did tons of IFR flying. Nice. Um, and like I said, I did it with my instructor that came out here. Did like an hour of actual like IMC. And um, for whatever reason, I felt comfortable doing it. Like I, like I felt good. You yeah. Know? So I'm like, I know I need to practice a lot, but and I'm not going to go right into the soup or anything like that, but I, I feel definitely ready to start. Yeah, to get into it, too, for sure. Start practicing. Do you have a hood with you? I do. Yeah. Can I throw it on? Absolutely. Hell yeah. It's a shitty hood, dude. I don't care. <laughs> what is it, just glasses with tape on it? <laughs> it's got tape on it. It's glasses with tape. It's got tape on it. That broke on my instrument check ride, bro. I'm Did not it? kidding. Yeah. It, had, it had a screw in the in the <laughs> front that holds it on, and it broke. I'll show that to the camera. Yeah, for the YouTubes. There you go. All right, yeah, cool. this, thing's, this thing's rough. Let's see, when you go to the hood, 35 after the hour. Cool. That works too. God, it broke my seal of my headset. All right, so a little bit of hood time. So really, you know, with with instrument, the main thing is you don't have your workload is going to be increased just automatically, right? Just okay. The lack of visual, lack of visual. So this is where you, know, you got to be on top of your game with both comms and navigation. Okay. Scanning becomes a, is the most important part of your uh, of flying IFR. If you get a good scan down. It's going to take a lot of the work out. So okay. don't fixate on your instruments, right? Okay. Bounce around between them. Do what works for you. If you go up and down, that's fine. Around in like a U or like a C, whatever you want to do, man. Just okay. constantly scan those instruments, making sure that you're they're you telling you what you want. Your uncle's heading direct Echo off in November. So with like an instrument like this, I mean, I have everything I need right here, basically. I've got yep. my speed, my altitude, but I still like to check. All my instruments is like still be scanning, or how would you do that? I, since you've got that, that really really helps you. you yeah. Know, so you can kind of just go around in there. Yeah. You know, and, and scan everything. Yep. Don't neglect these instruments because if then if you get something wrong, right, like a blockage, anything like that. Yeah. Where it's not going to be reading right, you might get hyperfixated here. Yeah. But still scan those other instruments, but you've got that you know little that little yeah. kind of one stop shop there. I don't have really a backup DG except obviously I have the compass, but yeah, you got that guy. Yeah. Um, don't, you know, it's, it's not like IFR approved or, you know, whatever you want to say, but don't neglect, like, the track on your GPS as okay. well. Desire track and track. Okay. That's really, it's really easy, like, it's just another piece of information, because you can't really tell, you can't tell what the wind's doing to you right here, right? Like, yeah. Like, course-wise. So, if it's calm, you know, you'll be good, but, um... Uh, reference that desired track and track for, uh, a lot and then okay. you'll you'll work out your steer heading okay. Yeah. Okay, only thing I got is very good yeah man having a plane with like a good autopilot I think is next level for IFR it is absolutely you get in the G1000 it's just oh, a my. cheat code dude yeah like this, this plane you actually have to fly like if you're gonna fly it like right now it's easy because I'm in cruise but right yeah I'll be, I'll be having to fly approaches actually yeah I did my I did my instrument on six pack with no autopilot or anything. Really? So, 
getting in a G1000 with the G1000 autopilot after that, it's like, dude, so easy. Do you have that traffic? I don't have them yet, but they're a thousand below. Yeah, okay. He should be no factor for us either way. We should probably cross behind him anyway. What about altitude holding? So, like, I'm um, 30 feet low, but I want to leave it. Would that be acceptable? Oh, yeah. You're, okay. you're good. You know, still got kind of like that plus or minus 100 mentality. Okay. You know, I think you'd be fine there. Distance below 3,000. The main thing with the instrument is you're, you, you have more, maintain that, maintain you have more going on, 4, right? Yeah. 4,000. So, we're going on your world kind of entire saturated world gets small so the four things that you can take care of as soon as they happen be proactive staying ahead of the plane right? yeah, yeah. It's, that's just kind of the, the name of the game with IFR you know you get a little bit off altitude and you don't like it fix it before something else becomes uh, a problem and then you have to fix that too that makes sense I like that um, another thing I do for like training and helping I do I don't know if you heard of that sim yeah 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 I do a lot of that sim IFR stuff on the sim at home. Yeah, that's in, I'll put it on like on like FSX, right? Like on flight sim. Uh, well, it's the new flight sim. Have you oh, seen the, the new one? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's right. One on Lucy, contact Savannah to one on eight point four. Good day. One one eight point four two seven one on Lucy. Thanks. I was wondering we were gonna get that. Yeah, it's getting a little scratchy. <laughs> Savannah approach. Good afternoon, Mooney two seven one one Whiskey four thousand five hundred. Mooney 2711 Whiskey, Savannah approach, altimeter 3013. 3013, you won on Whiskey, thanks. Alright. Start getting ahead of the airplane, like you said, so. Yeah, whatever you can do, man. 12305. Uh, uh, weather there is 122. You want to try the RNAV? Yeah, we can do the RNAV. RNAV, RNAV 1A. Um, really, uh, see if you can pull up the approach plate on there. You want know to do, do that? Yeah. Okay. Pull up the approach plate and we'll kind of brief it. Okay, yep. so, um, first thing I'm looking at is I like to look down here from uh, my altitude first. So I know I'm coming down to 2,000. Uh, final approach fix at 16. Uh, final approach course back up here is 179. I know the runway is long enough. Uh, runway touchdown zone is at 11 feet. Yep. Kind of what I do, you know, I come in and really I always start at the top and read the remarks really quick, make sure there's nothing important, right, that I that or is applicable to me, right? Okay. For us now, shoot the practice approach, I don't see anything important. Frequencies here, we've pretty much got our, all our frequencies in there. You've got your CTAF in the backup, you've got your AWAS in the backup as well. So from where we are, then I just look at the at the view, my approaches or my, my approach fixes, and then my altitudes, right? So we're gonna hit Fibru, which is an intermediate fix. That's what IF is. Yep. Fibru at 2,000 or out above 2,000, yeah, right? Let's see contact approach 134.875. 134.875. One on Whiskey. Approach, good afternoon. Mooney 2711 Whiskey 4,500. Number 2711 Whiskey, Savannah Approach, altimeter 3012. 3012, one on Whiskey. Uh, just a different frequency for Savannah, I guess. Yeah, okay. So, Fibru at above 2,000. Then uh, down we've got LPV, so we can follow. We're going to have our LT LPV glide slope, right? So it's yep. a DA, right? So we can go all the way down, 224. Two. Yep. Final approach fix, walks it at or above 1,600. And then for the LNAV only there, you've got your VDP 1.1 miles from runway 18. So we're not going to abide by that because we have LPV. VDP so is visual descent point, correct? Yes, yep. correct. Okay. Exactly. So and that's the point at, from which... At your MDA, you can descend to the runway, right? Yes, basically. It's it's at the point where anything past that would kind of be, you'd be unstabilized to get there. Ah, right? okay. Now, um, not every approach is going to give you a VDP, right? So yeah. if you're if you're shooting in with just LNAV, right, you don't have a DA or anything like that, and you're at a place without a VDP, and the missed approach point is, you know, like it is here, which is runway 18. Obviously, we can't reliably make a approach to landing when we're 400 feet right over the threshold of the runway we get into the side. So this is one thing that I was confused by actually today when I was studying. How do I know the missed approach point is running 1A? Is that because it's listed here? Yep, listed right there. Yep. So, okay, so if it's, it, that's what's listed at the end of the, the profile view, right? It's it's the missed approach point? Yes, you'll see it named right here, named runway 1A. Okay, okay. And uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't apply to... 
the LPB, right? Because you only can go down to 224, then you do your missed approach. Correct, right? yep. Okay. yep. So, you know, and if for whatever reason we lose glide slip, something like that, we just revert to our LNAV anyway. Okay. Up to our NDA, or just go missed, right? We'll fly that down all the way to 224. If you, uh, if you are flying an LNAV approach, and you don't have a VDP, the chart doesn't have a VDP, you can easily calculate one by the amount of height that you have to lose divided by 300 for a 3 degree glide slope. Okay, because that nice stable 3 degree glide slope brings you in, you know, base most distance pressure around that 3 degrees. So anything more than that would kind of be unstabilized, right? So you can calculate your own VDP from that. Okay. So how crew time works is, is basically exactly what like we're doing now, except I'm just not CFI on you, right? I'm not giving you any, any instructions. So what you would do, you log flight the whole time, right? You log flight and PIC the whole time. And then I log time and PIC from the point you're wearing the hood, acting as safety pilot. Okay. Because then I'm a required crew member under the FARS. So we're both able to log PIC because you're the sole manipulator of the controls, and I'm a required crew member performing safety pilot duties. Okay. And then my time ends... Uh, as soon as you take off the hood. Okay. okay. As long as you're a private pilot and in BMC, you can be a safety pilot. So that's how the, the logging works there. The only, the only thing that in practicality makes a difference with logging is you log uh, flight time and total time and PIC and all that for the whole flight, the pilot flying does. For the pilot monitoring, I would just log PIC for the time under the hood. So my total time and PIC time has to match your head time in your logbook. Okay, okay. So essentially, you know, like, you subtract 0.2, 0.3 off of it. Got it. And then you're, then you're, then you're good. That makes sense. A lot of schools do that. ATP is kind of the biggest one that does that. AT, that's how a lot of ATP students build time, because they allow two kids to go solo, split the time, and then they don't have to pay for an instructor, and they get to split time as well. Okay, coming in at 2,500 feet. Okay, cool. I'll probably make a call just because there's a lot of people. Yeah. Jekyll Island traffic, Booty 2711 Whiskey, about 15 miles to the north. We'll be doing a practice approach into runway 18 if it's safe, um, but expect a straight in approach for runway 18. Jekyll Island traffic. Same time as 5547 Echo Final 16. Okay, all my engine instruments are looking good. All right, you can go down uh, 2000. Okay, 2500 for 2000. 2000. Coming down. So the main thing. If you want to hear from ATC, you have to be cleared and established on the approach in order to shoot it and start descending, right? Okay, so, so they'll, they'll clear you for the approach, and then they'll say established as well? Or you have to be established. Oh, they won't, they won't tell you established. I've never heard that before. Okay. You, you can't be cleared on the approach, and you just, like, not be anywhere near the approach, right? Roger. Uh, okay. Or if you're cleared for the approach, you got to get on the approach, and then you can clear, then you can clear to descend, right? Roger that. So right now, we're on the approach. We're a brown direct fibru. And, you know, I tell you, 2711 Whiskey is cleared RNAV 18, Jekyll Island Airport, maintain VFR, whatever. Okay. So then, you're good to descend via the approach, right? Yes, sir, look at my altitudes. After 2000, after we cross Fibru, down to 16. My minimums, 224, that's low. Okay, speeds are all looking good. Good, you're looking Altitude good. looks good. Tracking the Fibru, cool. Left to 181 now. Perfect. Just holding short runway 16, Bravo 7. Going to be departing in about a minute or two. Okay. Go ahead and make a call. We're about a 10 mile final. Jekyll Island traffic, Moody 2711, Whiskey 10 mile final, runway 18. Jekyll Island. All right, now you're holding altitude here. Just hold, don't descend. Wait for that Wasp glide slope to come in. Let's start configuring. Okay. So, hold it at 2,000. Glide slope is active. We're below it. We're on the, now that we're on the approach, we're starting to get our glide slope about half deflection high. Let's start working into getting configured to land. Okay, configure okay. to come in at about 1.3 VSO. Okay, glide slope's coming in. Yeah, she's starting to come in now. All right, I'm going to get the gear down now while I can. Okay. Below 120, I'm gonna pull up a little bit. There's right. gear speed. Gear's coming down, locked, pulled, and indicating. Perfect. Get that drag in there. Looking good. Cool. You're flying that glide slip in. Nice. 
Check on the traffic. Mooney 2711 Whiskey, about a four mile final. RNAV 1A straight in. Jekyll Island. Four miles out. Next notch. All right, what's our minimums? 224 feet. Funny. All right, guys, so the battery for the cockpit cam died here, but you can see here my final approach. The tail cam caught it. Um, not bad. I'm pretty happy with it. Had to hunt here toward the end there. I was kind of chasing the localizer a little bit. Definitely something I need to work on in the future, but not bad for a first try here. So landing went fine, and then we parked, and we headed into town to grab some coffee. This camera I got for 30 bucks on Craigslist. Uh, Longest battery ever, dude. Still going. Coffee acquired. Turns out this is a resort, not a country club, but it's pretty nice. It's all blurred behind me, but uh, I mean, it's January and we flew an airplane to an island, so it's just ridiculous, man. So fortunate. Pretty cool. I'm going to have to come back here with Lauren. All right, guys, well, we are back home. Um, awesome day today. It's a ton of fun. Thanks to my buddy Ash for coming out with me. Um, like I said, he's a CFII, so I got to do some hood time today. Got to log that. That was a lot of fun. Um, and it just all worked out. So yeah, guys, I plan to log and share as much of my IFR training as I possibly can. So if you guys like this content, let me know in the comments. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to, all that jazz. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.